Hi, I'm Bruce Asia, and in this video we'll be looking at drum sounds using Groove Agent SE. We have a Groove Agent SE track set up here, and I'm going to click on this little keyboard icon to edit instrument. You can see here that I've actually got something set up already. This is a conventional kit. The interesting thing about this is I guess it goes to show that it's uh, Groove Agent SE goes beyond just electronic type sounds and it has a whole acoustic drum uh, setup built into it. And this doesn't just include the sounds itself, it actually also includes patterns as well. Now we have these two different ways of actually viewing what's going on. We have our pads and you can see on the pad it has the note C1, C sharp 1, D1 and so on. And when I press a key on the keyboard it highlights the pad and I can hear the sound playing. So I'm going between that kick and the snare. What I'm going to do also is make sure that actually when I actually press the sound I want to be able to see what's going on in terms of uh, I want it to move between the different pads. So I'm clicking on this little MIDI box, the MIDI follow box. So you can see now when I press the sound it goes to that particular pad. I go to the snare, it highlights that one. And it, what it does, it brings up everything in the window related, in this middle window related to that particular sound. We can actually see on this one, that actually it's built up a whole bunch of different samples. There's multiple layers. You can layer sounds, you can do velocity switching, velocity crossfading, all kinds of other interesting stuff within the setup of this particular sampler. We don't need to worry about it at the moment. We can look at the mixer as well. And there are various other options in terms of how the sounds are managed, how they're streamed into the interface and so on. Let's go back to that edit view. Let's also flick back to the patterns. If I click on this pattern box there, you'll notice that when I press this button, it actually plays a pattern. What this is in fact doing, this isn't a recording of a drummer playing that actual pattern. It's actually a MIDI pattern that's triggering the various drum sounds. I can actually click on the button here, or I can actually click on my interface, on my keyboard here, and get it to play. So this is chorus B, and you can see it counting through. This is tempo matched as well, so it means that actually whatever tempo you've got set down here, it will actually play faster or slower. And these are complete drum performances. There's lots of other functionality which allows you to actually manipulate and edit what's going on here in terms of the actual style and what's going on. And this little style box here, you can change things like complexity, the quantize, the swing, how often certain elements of the kit play, and it gets into quite a lot of detail. But all you need to know for this at this point is really that actually you can access those preset sounds quite easily by pressing the various keys on the keyboard. So we click on this button here, this pad and it's labelled bridge. We can also trigger it using the key here. I can of course record these MIDI notes into Cubase and watch it going past and actually use it to trigger different patterns. But actually a really powerful way of accessing some of these patterns is to actually just drag the MIDI straight into the track. So you do drag MIDI pattern, I can drag it straight to this track here into the Groove Agent and actually what you then get is I just zoom in a little bit, we get a full pattern to play. So just looping around at the moment, let's just stop that loop. If I go into it, I can access it here. You can see it triggering the various sounds. I can also access it again from this drum editor. Let's zoom out a little bit and I can obviously add elements to it. So you can see that it's not that drummer's actual performance in terms of the audio, it's actually the MIDI notes. And I can then customize that as I see fit. Now the other interesting thing about that also is now I've got that MIDI in there, and we go back to the project window, I can actually change the kit. So I can change the sounds that's actually being triggered um, by, by, these, by these MIDI events. So I go back into Groove Agent and 
I've got different ways of accessing the various elements of content, and most of it is found in this right-hand side of, this, of the box here. You can search on different kits. If I click on here, I can choose so-called all these all agents, these all instrument sets, and we have other specific ones. So, for example, I've got the rock pop tool, the rock pop toolbox, production grooves, and various other kinds of things as well. Let's choose SE kits, and I could choose, for example, let's choose a drum and bass kit. Just load that up. Now you can see now, if I actually go back to this instrument view, it's a whole other different set of sounds, but they're still gonna be triggered by those notes I've got in there already. So I've got the slightly ironic situation of choosing a kit that's designed for drum and bass, yet I've got a pattern which was designed for a much more conventional, a kind of acoustic kind of rock type setup, and that pattern is triggering those drum and bass sounds. And I suppose the point there is also that you can be really creative about this. There's no rules about which sounds you really should use for different types of genres, uh, and you can obviously mix and match, and that can be quite powerful when it comes to actually creating, creating music. Let's dip back into the interface here for uh, Groove Agent SE. We've talked about this pad area here, we've talked about the patterns, um, and I've also mentioned briefly about how you can actually access the mixer. Um, it's worth pointing out that you can do a little bit of editing, even if you're not heavily into creating your own sounds from scratch. If I click on this pad here, or I press the, the relevant MIDI note, you can see it actually playing back that bit of uh, audio. You can see the audio waveform there. And I do have some tools that allow me to, allow me to manipulate what's going on. I can change the volume, the panning, I can also change the type, the actual tuning. I can go and actually do more um, elaborate changes to pitch, including pitch envelope. I've got control over various types of filters. Now in this case, it's actually not engaged. I'd click the filter and choose a certain type of filter, choose, choose, choose a certain filter type. Um, I've got the amp envelope here as well um, to actually change, I could maybe tighten up the sound. I also have access to a whole bunch of effects, these auxiliary effects, inserts, effects, loads of different types of effects built into the, the engine itself. Um, I can actually play around with the sample, how the sample is played. I could reverse it, for example, or put it back to normal. I can do other kinds of things where I can actually chop it so it becomes much shorter uh, and so on. I can even loop. Uh, loop the samples and there's a little toolbar along the top which has a whole load of other different uh, functions so um, it allows you to control what the mouse is doing just within this particular kind of window. Groove Agent windows can all be pulled out you can actually bring them up as separate windows the, the interface is very customizable but I'd like to keep it kind of pretty straightforward by keeping everything in place here to keep an idea of um, how everything fits together. You can even do loop slicing as well so it's something where you can actually import wholesale loops slice them up and then they can play back at different tempos and there's a whole set of presets which actually make make use of that as well and then things like MIDI effects which actually do things to actually affect the way in which the MIDI is triggered particularly in relation to patterns. So in this video we looked at Groove Agent SE in Cubase we saw how powerful it is and it allows you to access electronic sounds acoustic drum sounds MIDI patterns and using those MIDI patterns to trigger lots of other different kinds of sounds and how we can actually drag those MIDI patterns into the main project window. And also we learned that you can actually trigger those MIDI patterns from different keys. So you can actually create quite elaborate arrangements just by using different keys to trigger those MIDI patterns.